There's a saying that's out there. It's two little words and it means a lot. And those words are, I do. It's the real estate show. Hi, my name is Rick Naples. I am the owner broker of Zone Realty LLC, you zone your home, a real estate agency located in Plainville, Connecticut. I've been a broker for a number of years and I'm always asked a lot of questions about real estate and about the different things that get involved in a real estate transaction. One of the first steps besides just looking as a buyer to find a mortgage officer and get yourself pre-qualified is to find a realtor to help you either find the home you're looking to purchase or if you're a seller, helping you sell that home and getting a price that you're comfortable with. A lot of realtors have specific specialities in different types of things within the industry. Now you have those that are specialists in residential sales. You have those that are specialists in doing rentals like apartments or, you know, office spaces or even retail spaces, which brings me to those that are specifically licensed for commercial real estate. Most realtors in the state of Connecticut that deal with home sales are residential agents. In other words, they've been trained to do residential sales. They learn how to market your home, how to get proper exposure of of the home to as many buyers as possible. They also have been trained to learn how to price a home. And pricing becomes very, very important when it comes to putting a home on the market. I mean, if you price too high, no one's going to come look at the house. If you price too low, you may be leaving money on the table. So you need to talk to an expert that can help you price your home so that it's competitive to like homes on the market. Now, one of the things that realtors bring to the table is they do bring their experience and their expertise. So when it comes to setting that price, they know what the market is going to be able to support as far as buyers coming to look at the home and willing to pay that price. And if the buyer is financing, the bank appraising the home for the value that the buyer is looking to pay for it. So it's kind of an art. It's a science. There are a lot of things that are involved in coming up with the right number so that the house sells, so the buyer satisfied with the price they're paying, the seller satisfied with the price they're getting, and the bank is satisfied with the value of the home in order to give the mortgage for that home to close. Now, as I said, a lot of realtors are out there and they have specialities as far as what they do. Some of them are very good in the residential market. Some of them are very good as far as commercial is concerned. And then there are some that do a little bit of everything. Who's the right realtor for you? I mean, who are you going to choose? There are thousands of licensed individuals out there that are real estate agents. There are thousands of real estate agents that call themselves realtors. Well, what's the difference? Well, the realtor is one who's gone a little bit more in their education and commitment to the industry by joining the National Association of Realtors and pledging to uphold the strict code of ethics by the way that they conduct themselves and do business. Now, I'm not saying that real estate agents don't have good ethics. I'm just saying that in order to be a realtor and in order to display the realtor sign or to put realtor after their name when they're advertising, They have to be a member of the National Association of Realtors and have signed to take that pledge. 
The code of ethics that's provided to the realtor gives them guidelines, rules, policies, procedures on how to conduct the real estate business. And this is so you can have confidence and trust in the way that they conduct themselves and the way they're going to handle your transaction. Now, earlier on, I was talking about questions. Questions are something that are very important throughout the whole real estate transaction. You need to ask questions. There's a lot of what if questions out there. There's a lot of, you know, what if this happens? What if that happens? Can I do this? Can I do that? That get involved when you're trying to sell your home or when you're trying to buy a home. Now, how does that all relate to what I said at the very beginning of the show, those two words, I do? Well, let's talk about that for a minute or two. I do is kind of a loaded phrase. It is an acceptance. It is a way of expressing to someone that you do something that you have the expertise, you have the experience, you have the knowledge of being able to do that or whatever that thing might be. I like to tell a little story of uh, just recently my daughter celebrated her birthday and every time her birthday comes up I always flash back to when she was very little and I was teaching her to do something as simple as tie her shoes. Now it was a little (laughs) bit of a challenge for me because I'm right-handed and my daughter takes after her mother and is left-handed. So when you have a right-handed person trying to teach a left-handed person how to tie a shoe, it's a little bit more challenging. So she used to get frustrated with me because I used to try to come around behind her and, and try to tie her shoe while I was standing behind her in order to give her the perception of how to do it left-handedly. Now, I tell that story because in her frustration, she had enough knowledge and had learned enough to where she could attempt to tie the shoe herself. And she would always say to me, I do, I do, I do. It's a way of kind of putting me off and and saying she's going to take care of it. She can do it. You know, she doesn't need my help. Uh, That's kind of been a running joke in my mind for a number of years because I always think that when I'm trying to teach somebody something and they've gathered enough information to be able to go on by themselves, I think to myself, they've reached that I do level. I do. I do. I can do it. I do. I do. I do. Two little words that can hold a lot of meaning. It can say you have the confidence to complete a task. It can convey to others you can do it. It might communicate a sense of trust. I do can also be used as a confirmation of an agreement, such as acknowledging you are willing and accepting of a responsibility. Big words that must be used appropriately. They can also be used in answering the who does questions. Realtors have a can-do attitude. When asked if they can or will do something in real estate, they might answer with a I do. For instance, when a buyer or a seller asks, does residential sales? Realtors say, I do. I'm Rick Naples, Realtor, Broker, Zone Realty, LLC. Zone Realty is licensed in Connecticut, 860-385-2218. Real estate is one of those things that fits within that I do category. There are people that are out there that feel they have enough knowledge, enough experience, but they haven't gone to the point of where they've gone to school or gathered the education or been in the practice of buying or selling a home. And they say to themselves, I don't need a realtor. I don't need a home inspector. I don't need an attorney. 
I do. I can do it myself. There are some success stories that are out there. I'm not going to lead you wrong. There are individuals that have put their homes up for sale, done it on their own without the guidance or the expertise of a realtor. But when you pull back the blankets and you kind of look underneath as to how those transactions happen, it's usually somebody who already had someone in place that was going to buy their home or knew somebody who wanted to buy their home. In other words, they were able to sell it directly to someone without using the realtor because it was pretty much a transaction that was already done. They've tried to avoid having the expenses of paying a realtor or paying a home inspector or even in some cases hiring an attorney because maybe the individual who's purchasing their home that they already know is buying it for cash and there's no mortgage involved. But when you have a transaction that is going to be involved on multiple levels where there's a bank involved and there's an appraiser involved, And there's all kinds of legalities that are involved in order for a transaction to transfer the ownership of a house from one person to the other. It's best to go out there and find the experts, the people with the knowledge and the training to be able to guide you and help direct you through that transaction to make sure that there are no problems. Now, I've been in the real estate business for a lot of years and I'm a broker which means I have the ability to oversee other agents when they do their transactions and their business. And I've seen a lot of deals go textbook. And what I mean by that is deals that come together perfectly. They chug right along through the transaction and everything happens as it's supposed to happen, when it's supposed to happen, and like it's supposed to happen. And then I've seen transactions that have been shaky You know, things have come up that have been challenging to keep the deal together or there's been petty little arguments between the buyer or the seller or maybe something goes wrong with the appraisal of the home. Something comes up in a home inspection. I've seen those kinds of transactions and I've been in the business long enough to see transactions that never make it to the closing table, what we call falling apart. There's a number of reasons a deal can fall apart. Um, It could be as simple as two parties just not being able to make the compromises to make the deal move forward. Or it could be an outside influence that happens. Uh, I've unfortunately been in a position where I've been representing a buyer and been right up to the closing date. And unfortunately, the buyer passed away. (laughs) So obviously, the transaction was not going to happen. I've been on the other side of the table where the seller at the very last minute decided they did not want to go through with the deal and close it and backed out. Um, You know, so I've had all those situations happen. I've been around for a number of years where I've pretty much, well, I'm not going to say that I've seen it all in real estate because one of the things any realtor will tell you and they're telling a little bit of a fib if they say otherwise, is that they've seen it all. Well, real estate transactions, although there is a format, there is a formula that's followed. You know, there are dates, there are certain things that have to be done in a transaction in order to get it to a closing. In other words, keys transferring, money transferring hands. um, That hopefully go along the way they're supposed to. But as I said, sometimes those things can get a little bit off track. And I'm not going to say that I've seen everything because even with all the years of experience that I have in the real estate business and all the different things that I've accomplished over the years, and I have all the accolades and awards and all that kind of stuff. And and those of you that know me, that have used me as a realtor before, Uh, know that I'm not one that really likes to push things in people's face. I don't display all my awards and certificates and say, look at me, look how great I am, you know, those kinds of things. Um, Those are accomplishments that give me satisfaction. And of course, if someone asks about them, I'm glad to share the different things that I've done over the years. But I don't really push on those. 
maybe that's a personal fall of mine. I just feel that my satisfaction is that when somebody hires me as their realtor and I can accomplish the job that they've hired me for selling their home, finding a home, closing a commercial transaction, whatever it might be. When that deal closes, that's my satisfaction. That's my accolade. I've successfully done that. One of the things that you probably wonder is, you know, how many closings has Rick Naples had? You know, how good is he? How does he do this? I don't, my actions speak for themselves. As I said, anybody who's done business with me knows exactly what I do. So I really don't promote that stuff. But again, it's all there for anybody to see that wanted to see it. But anyways, getting back to those two words, I do. I've had conversations with people about different things and they have an I do attitude. And that's a strong attitude to have. That's a good attitude to have. But sometimes it's a questionable attitude. I bring that up when people do handyman projects around their homes. You know, why should I hire a plumber? Why should I hire an electrician? I don't need somebody to build a deck or lay a patio or do a sidewalk or whatever it might do. I can do that. I do. I do. I do. Um, maybe they can. Maybe they can't. You know, the home improvement stores make a lot of money every single year by people that do things themselves. But there comes cases when you do need to hire a professional, when you do need to hire somebody that has that I do ability to be able to accomplish the task that's at hand. What is that feeling when you can do something? I call it the I do feeling. It's a confidence, a secure acknowledgement that you can do it. You have the know-how, the expertise, the experience to accomplish the task at hand. I do, I do, I do. Those words are not to be taken lightly. From the simple to the more challenging. When they say I do, Conveys the commitment and acceptance in getting the job done. I'm Rick Naples, broker, Zone Realty LLC. Licensed in Connecticut, Zone Realty LLC, 860-385-2218. So the question is, can you sell your home or can you buy a home on your own? I do. I can do it. Well, yes, you can. There are possibilities of being able to do that yourself. But again, looking to hire a realtor, if you're going to hire somebody to help you do that kind of transaction, you want to be able to sift through all the real estate agents and all the realtors that are out there and pick the one that you have the confidence and the trust in, in order to help you accomplish that particular goal. You want somebody that's personable. You want somebody that's knowledgeable. You want somebody that's fun to work with. You want someone that's available to you to ask those questions and be comfortable enough to ask them any question that comes to mind. The realtor that you work with also has to have an I do attitude. They've got to be able to answer your questions and help you through the transaction. They've also got to be able to admit to you when they don't know something. I don't know this. I don't know that. But they have the ability to find the answer. There are also things that you can ask realtors they, they cannot answer for you. In other words, that comes up with disclosures. You know, they're not able to tell you certain things. Your question may be an innocent question, but maybe it taps into housing discrimination. Maybe it's, it's a question that the realtor wouldn't be comfortable in answering. They may direct you to someone else. Uh, I get asked legal questions about real estate transactions all the time. And I have to basically say, 
you know, that's a question for your attorney, you know, ask the attorney directly. Because again, you know, I've been in the business a lot of years and I've seen a lot of things and I've done a lot of transactions and I probably know how things are supposed to go. And I probably have an idea legally as to how you would handle a certain situation, but I am not an attorney. I'm not trained, educated, or have a license to practice law. So I can't advise on those kinds of things. It's best for me to say, go to the attorney. It's the same thing with home inspection issues. I've done a lot of projects myself over the years. Um, I've had an I do attitude when it comes to a lot of simple projects around the house. Uh, people who have been watching the real estate show for a while knew a couple of years ago I bought a HUD foreclosure. Pretty much did everything that needed to be done myself, but I did get a contractor involved because I was required to do that by the bank to do some of the bigger items. But again, I had an I do attitude, so I was able to accomplish a lot myself and save a little money. Am I going to advise somebody to do a lot of work themselves? Maybe not. Again, home inspection issues come up. I'm going to say to that buyer, you need to have this, you need to have that you know, person, that knowledgeable person, that experienced person to take care of this. And a lot of times when a buyer requests a seller to repair or change something, the seller will only agree to it if it is done by a licensed and experienced individual. The seller themselves should not be doing items on their own. They should be having a professional do those things. So there's documentation, especially when it comes to pulling permits on things. And that's a whole nother story when it comes to permits. An I do attitude is extremely important when you're looking to do or accomplish anything. You want to be able to lay the groundwork and be able to put together the education that you need in order to follow through in anything that you need to do. If you're looking for a realtor to do a residential sale, I do. If you're looking for a realtor to help you find a rental, I do. If you're looking for a realtor to be able to help you find a commercial rental, I do. If you're a business owner that's looking to sell your business, I do. I do a lot of things when it comes to the real estate industry and the real estate market. And I can say that because I have the year's experience in doing those kinds of transactions. But I will make this one promise. One of the signs of a good realtor is a realtor that can say to you when you ask a question or if you propose a certain thing, I don't know, or that is not within the realm of my licensing. We did a show on that particular saying. A realtor that you can have confidence and trust in. So when they say to you, I can do this, I do that, I do, they're giving you that information that they're able to follow through and be able to help that transaction go from one point to the other and have a successful closing. My name is Rick Naples and this has been The Real Estate Show. I thank you very much for watching. And I'll see you next time. Sometimes life just happens. Don't worry. Farmington Motorsports will get you back on the road and at a fair price. From towing to tires, emissions to transmissions. Our ASC certified techs do it all. Farmington Motorsports is a family-run business. We're a Napa Auto Center and AAA approved. We work on all makes and models from preventative maintenance to major repairs. And every repair is backed by our two-year, 24,000-mile nationwide warranty. When life happens to you, don't worry. Farmington Motorsports.
follow us on Instagram at nutmeg.tv.